The plants are coming together swimmingly. I've found good sources of bone, flesh and blood, but thus far a good sampling of sinew and marrow have escaped me. No matter, the city is swollen with contemptuous foes who will be missed by nobody. Hi true crime fans, Yeppe here and welcome to a new Player One series where we light our torches and investigate the criminal scum and the lollygagging creatures that dwell in the shadows of Skyrim. I am here today with my co-detective Jacob, so uh, what are we investigating today, Jacob? Hello. Today we are following a sinister trail of blood on the icy streets of Windhelm and trying to shed some light on the eerie case of an infamous individual who would be known in dark history simply as the Butcher. The inhabitants of Windhelm were looking over their shoulders when returning home after a night of escapism at the local inn Cantlehalf Hall. Lately, a number of young female Windhelmians had fallen victim to a heinous serial murderer and even a night of drinking meat and singing songs could not quite rid the townsfolk of the spine-chilling feeling that they were being watched. On this particular night, a blood-curdling scream broke the wintry silence and people were quick to find the source. It came from the cemetery near the front gates of the city. Another victim had been found, and the body quickly told a harrowing tale. The butcher had once again struck in the cover of night. This time, a young local woman by the name of Susanna was the victim. What do we know about her, Jacob? Well, Susanna, also known in Windhelm as Susanna the Wicked, worked as a waitress at Cantlehearth Hall. The innkeeper, Elder Early Dawn, describes her as being a well-liked employee at the inn and the name, the Wicked, was meant as a bit of a joke as she was by all accounts very friendly and got along with all of the patrons who always tipped her generously. She was especially close with Nils, the inn's cook, as they shared an interest in traditional Nord cuisine. She, of course, fits the mold in terms of what type of victim the butcher would look for, young, female and a resident of Windhelm. When her body was examined by Helgeard in the Hall of the Dead, it bore the marks you would expect to find on one of the butcher's victims and she still had all of her valuables on her, such as jewelry and gold, which ruled out that it was a robbery, of course. Okay, interesting. Um, what else do we know from the scene of the crime and what about witnesses? Were there any witnesses present? Yes, there actually was. When the first guard arrived to the cemetery, three individuals were present. Helgeard, a local priestess of R.K., who, as we mentioned before, would later examine the corpse, was there. Also present was a man named Calixto Corium, who runs the town's museum of curiosities. And finally, a beggar called Silda the Unseen, who had been arrested a couple of times for petty theft in the past. When these witnesses were questioned by the authorities, none of them had something really all that helpful to say, if we're being honest. Um, Helgeard stated that she did not see the culprit, presumably because she arrived a while after the crime actually took place. Calixto says on record that he saw a man running away, but that he did not get a good look at him. Silda claims that she came running as soon as she heard the scream, but that she didn't see anyone when she arrived, except for of course the deceased. After examining the body, Hergeard reported it had some unusual marks on it, most likely made with an ancient curved type of Nord blade. Traditionally those would be used for embalming the dead, so they would be quite rare. She also stated that she did not know anyone in Windhelm with access to such tools, except for, of course, herself. Quite the unsettling comment when you think about it. Yes. Well, upon further investigation of the crime scene, a trail of blood was discovered in the snow, leading towards the residential quarter of Windhelm, more specifically a vacant property called Yerem. What, uh, what information is uncovered when this house is investigated, Jacob? So, at the time of the murders, no one lived at the property, and the only person with a key, and therefore access, was a woman by the name of Tova Shattershield. She has this key because the house used to belong to her daughter Frigga, who was actually identified as being one of the first victims of the butcher. Tova, who has fallen on hard times at the bottom of a bottle after the tragic events, does not really offer much information to aid the investigation, but she does provide access to the house where some essential clues 
were uncovered. When the house is examined, it is discovered that it might not be as abandoned as first believed. Several items point to the fact that someone has been frequenting the house recently and behind a false wall in a closet, a sinister looking altar of sorts is found. It appears that someone has been using human body parts for some kind of mysterious dark ritual. Furthermore, a book with the title Butcher Journal is found in the house. It contains the following unsettling inscription. Last night I was almost able to corner Susanna as she left Candle Hearth. Idiot God showed up at just the wrong moment and I had to turn about, just out for a stroll and so forth. There will be other chances, but the time is drawing near. One more attempt at the Candle Hearth girl. She's proving to be a bit too cautious, but those strong joints of hers should contain the most exquisite tendons. Worth the effort. Tonight. The journal also mentions that the butcher is messing about with some dark magic and a sort of recipe for a ritual is found, although it is unclear exactly what the purpose of it would be. Finally, a strange amulet is found in the house. Yeah, precisely. This clue would actually later be very important, but we will get back to that in a moment. At this point of the investigation, the first real suspect is named by the investigators, the local court wizard Woundfirth, also known as Woundfirth the Unliving. Suspicion mainly fell on him at the time because of the type of rituals that the butcher was seemingly performing. Another reason why Woundfirth is a suspect is because of the strange amulet found at the empty house. It is taken to Calixto at the Museum of Curiosities. You might remember him, he was one of the initial witnesses at Susanna's murder. Calixto is also kind of an expert of ancient artifacts, and upon inspecting the amulet, he mentions that it is an item called a wheel stone, which is an old heirloom traditionally carried by the court wizards of Windhelm. When asked if it should be given to Wundfirth for safekeeping and studying, Calixto mentions that Wundfirth is rumored to be dabbling with necromancy, a dark art in which human body parts are often used such as seen by the altar in uh, Frida Shattershield's house earlier in the investigation. Woundfirth is at this point held for questioning about the murders, but then something happens that shocks the citizens of Windhelm and proves once and for all that Woundfirth is in fact not guilty. The Butcher strikes again, but this time he makes a mistake that would prove the end of his reign of terror once and for all. Yes, and it is important to know the role that Woundfirth played in this part of the investigation. When he was questioned, he claimed to have found a pattern that might be able to help predict when the butcher would strike again, and the investigators decided that it was actually worth looking into. This is what Woundfirth says on the record. I've been noting a pattern to when the killings happen. Now that we know they're tied into some sort of necromantic ritual, I think I know when the next might occur. Let's see. From a Lordars of Last Seed until a Midars of Hearthfire. It will happen soon. Very soon. Keep watch in the Stone Quarter tomorrow night. That's almost certainly where the killer will strike next. It is almost chilling how right the elderly wizard would turn out to be. As mentioned earlier, the investigators choose to watch the Stone Quarters very closely at sundown on the following day. This would be the night where the butcher claimed his final victim, a local woman called Arivanya. It was an unusually cold evening, even for Windhelm, and Arivanya was just stopping at the market before returning home to her waiting husband Ulundil to relax after a long day working at the establishment they owned together, the Windhelm stables just outside the city gates. Just as she was ready to leave the market, she saw a shadowy figure approaching her with haste. The investigators stationed around the stone quarters also saw this from a distance and heard her calling for help. Unfortunately, by the time they arrived to her location, she was already lying lifeless on the frost-covered ground. A man was seen fleeing the scene just moments before and was immediately chased by the investigators following the instructions of the witnesses. The sound of fast footsteps on the crisp ice was all that was heard in the snow of the night and it looked like the murderer might get away with his crimes once again. Luckily, 
The butcher was seen by a local shopkeeper running into Yerim, the house that was investigated earlier when Susanna was murdered. The shadowy figure heard inside, closed the door and locked behind him. Stricken with panic, he ran into the secret room where he believed he was safe from the people he had sensed chasing him down the quiet streets of Windhelm on his way to his final hideout. He heard someone break down the doors and the once so tranquil house was suddenly full of commotion. He heard footsteps approaching his secret chamber and readied himself for one last stand. When the investigators walked up to the secret room, they knew this was it. This was going to be the answer they had been looking for. Who is he? Who is the butcher? When they tore away the fake paneling, they were surprised to see a very familiar face on the other side. The dim candlelight revealed the man they had all seen in their nightmares as of late. It was one of the initial witnesses from the graveyard. The butcher was in fact Calixto Corium. He leapt at them with his knife drawn and before he could reach his intended target an arrow hit his knee. My days of adventuring are over, he thought to himself, but he had one last attack in him. Calixto got back up and mustered all of his strength, but after a clumsy step or two, the butcher was stopped forever by the strike of a sword. It was all over. His reign of terror had come to an end, and the people of Windhelm could once again feel safe at night. So who was Calixto? And why did he commit these terrible crimes? What do we know, Jeppe? Well, it is actually quite a tragic and also very creepy tale. When Calixto was a young man, he traveled all of Tamriel with his beloved sister Lucilla, looking for interesting items for his curious collection. Through these travels, they found the items he would later display in his museum, such as the Book of Fate, the Dancer's Flute and Isgrama's Spoon. While traveling the continent, tragedy struck, however. Lucilla died. It is not known precisely how she died, but by all accounts this left Calixto in a state of deep depression. After coming to Windhelm, he set up the Museum of Curiosities and tried to go on with his life, but the grief did not diminish and he always searched for a way to bring back his beloved Lucilla. One day he found the answer hidden in the dark arts of necromancy. He would have to collect human body parts in order to put his sister together piece by piece and reanimate her by using an old Altmer ritual. For this sinister project, he also acquired an ancient necromancer's amulet and a set of old Nordic embalmment tools. By the time he was caught, the ritual was nearly complete. Nevertheless, instead of reuniting with his sister in the realm of the living, or unliving if you will, he ended up joining her in death. When he was searched, lying cold on the damp and frosty floor in the house, they found a key in his pocket that opened a chest in the attic of his museum of curiosities. The chest contained the tools used for the murders, as well as one final journal that documented the last days of his life. Soon enough, my sweet Lucilla, you will be with me again. Normally, when such words are written, it is because the love left behind is soon to depart. But in my case, I hope to soon bring your spirit back into my world. For it was you who loved this world so much, not I. I continue to collect your new form from the ragged bits around Windhelm. If they only knew what destiny would soon grace their bodies, with your spirit imbuing them with higher purpose, they would surely thank me for the great gift I give them. I reserve for them a place of beauty alongside your heart. The day draws near. Soon I will hold you. And I will show you this, and it will be as delivering a long forgotten letter to a weary traveler. Love always, Calixto. So, luckily, that was the end of The Butcher of Windhelm. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you will join us again next time we take a look at the creepy cases of crime and tragedy that hide in the dark corners of the province of Skyrim.
yeah and uh, also give us a like or a subscription or both maybe and uh, take care until next time bye human beings